Hello and welcome to this session in which we will discuss the fair value of non-financial assets and liabilities. In the prior session, we looked at the fair value of financial assets and liabilities. So it's very helpful if you view the prior recording about financial assets and liabilities, how to determine their fair value. Now we have to understand the fair value of non-financial assets. What is financial assets? Financial assets are stocks, bonds, financial instruments. Non-financial assets are building, land, property, plant, and equipment. Now, to find out their fair value, it's going to be a little bit more complex, or I would say more challenging, in quote. And the reason is because there's no readily available active market for property, plant, and equipment, in contrast to stocks and bonds. For example, financial instruments, stocks, bonds, stocks of publicly traded companies, especially bonds of publicly traded companies, are publicly traded. There's an active market. For non-financial assets, there's no similar active market. Now, non-financial assets encompasses a broad range of items such as property, plant and equipment, intangible asset like trademarks, patent or copyright, and commodities, among others. Now, the good thing about US GAAP is we don't have to report those assets at fair value. But for IFRS, we have to. Now, for certain assets, we might have to. Just you need to know the rules about fair value of non-financial assets. It's not as important as financial assets and financial liabilities because we do report those. We do report those at fair market value. So in this session, we would look at the rules for valuing non-financial assets and non-financial liabilities. Let's go ahead and get started. Before we proceed any further, I have a public announcement about my company, FarhatLectures.com. Farhat Accounting Lectures is a supplemental educational tool that's going to help you with your CPA exam preparation as well as your accounting courses. My CPA material is aligned with your CPA review course such as Becker, Roger, Wiley, Gleam, Miles. My accounting courses are aligned with your accounting courses broken down by chapter and topics. My resources consist of lectures, multiple choice questions, true-false questions, as well as exercises. Go ahead, start your free trial today. The fair value of non-financial assets should be determined based on the highest and best use of the asset. That's the rule. So what does it mean, highest and best use? This represents the use of the asset by market participant, by the users, that would maximize, gives you the highest return from the asset or the group of the asset for which the asset would be used. Simply put, the way we look at the fair value is what is the best and highest use of the asset? And we value it based on that. Taken into account though, the physical and economic factors. We should consider the physical factor of the asset. You know, is it brand new, kind of old, in between? The location of the asset. Is it, is it in a place where it's actively uh, producing or it's in a place where it's useless. It, it, we don't need it in that place. Any other functional or economic limitation. Also, we have to look at the asset in, co in combination with other assets or versus a standalone. So some non-financial asset may generate a maximum value when used in combination with other assets. For example, this machine is could be useless unless you have another machine that can be used with it. So when you value this machine, it's basically, it could be useless. Maybe this machine needs another machine and together they have the maximum use. For, for example, a machine, a machinery in production line might have its highest value when used with other complementary machinery. So by itself, it's useless. Therefore, we have to take that into account when we when we are looking at the highest and best use. We also have to remember that the principal and not or, well, or the most advantageous market also applies just like it applies for financial asset. So the fair value should be based on the principal market and the principal market is the market with the most volume and most activity. And we talked about this when I discussed the financial asset. If it doesn't exist, if this principal market don't exist, we looked at the most advantageous market, which is the maximum amount of value we can receive from the asset. Remember, the principal market don't take into account transaction cost, while the while the most advantageous market does take into does take into account transaction cost. What valuation technique do we use when it comes to non-financial assets? As I mentioned earlier, given the absence of active market for many non-financial assets, well, well, we have to use 
other valuation techniques. What could be some other valuation techniques? And we're, I'm going to use this truck as an example. So let's assume we want to look, we want to place a fair value on this truck and report that fair value. Well, we could use the market approach. This method uses the price and relevant information from market transaction identical or comparable. So we would look at what a truck like this would be sold at. If we can find this, that's a great. We use the market approach. That's one way to do it. How about if this truck is already used? Well, what do we do? Reflect the amount that would be required to replace the service capacity of an asset called the replacement cost. We look at the replacement cost of this truck. And if we have two, we'll just, you know, one is for, let's assume we found two replacement costs. One is for 20,000 and one is for 22,000. I would say it's 21,000. How about that? Or we could use the income approach to value this truck. What is the income approach? We would look at the future cash flow that this truck is generating, and we will discount the future cash flow to the present, convert future amount of cash flow or, or income and expenses, usually cash flow, to a single current amount, which is the discounted cash flow, and we say this is the fair value of this truck using this approach. As I mentioned earlier, this, this is not a major issue for US GAAP, but knowing fair value of non-financial asset would put into perspective how we find out the fair value of financial assets. Remember, under financial asset, we have level one, level two, level two hierarchy. That's important. So make sure you know this topic. What should you do now? Go to Farhat Lectures, look at additional MCQs, resources that's going to help you, whether you are an accounting student, CPA, CMA candidate, invest yourself, invest in yourself, invest in your education. Good luck, study hard, and of course, stay safe.